Hello everybody, my name is Andrew Coward. I'm a graduate student at Monash University specialising in geochemical pattern formation. In this video we'll be talking about zebra rock, what it is, where you find it, and most importantly, how it goes stripes. So what exactly is zebra rock? Uh, fundamentally it's a pattern brown and white it occurring age silt stone uh, found only in the vicinity of Lake Argyle in the East Kimberley region of Western Australia. It's of particular interest to both scientists and the public uh, due to its well-defined and highly regular oscillating brown and white pattern, uh, which is truly unlike anything else in the geological record. Examples of such patterns can be seen on this slide, which truly showcases the wide variety of different pattern morphologies that we can find in zebra rock. Uh, examples range from horizontal banding to curved vertical banding to ordered lattices of dots or rod structures to uh, other more complex uh, pattern shapes and morphologies. Worldwide, zebra rock can only be found in outcrops of the Ranford Formation around Lake Argyle in the East Kimberley. Uh, this study saw samples from five such outcrops, which are shown there in Figure 1b. In order to determine the mechanisms underlying the formation of iron banding in zebra rock, this study has undertaken a wide range of analyses, as detailed on this slide, with many more planned for the near future. However, as we lack the time to discuss every finding on this study in detail, we will focus on the key conclusions so far. So the first main observation is that the brown pigment of zebra rock is composed of hematite in every sample examined so far. This hematite typically takes form of aggregated hexagonal platelets a few hundred nanometers in width, as seen in the TM image on the right. In contrast, other mineral phases in zebra rock show no significant variation in concentration between the dark and white banding, suggesting the pattern was constructed entirely through the addition and or removal of iron-bearing minerals. With this in mind, and upon examining the relative weight percentages of hematite at the periphery of the pattern, as in figure 4, it becomes clear that the hematite itself was likely mobilized from an original iron bearing host sediment and re precipitated into regular repeating patterns. Although composition varies significantly between our crops, the mineralogical assemblage of zebra rock generally consists of a mixture of hematite, quartz, clays, titanium oxides, and aluminium sulfate minerals. Many of these minerals, including dikite, alunite, pyrophyllite, and svembergite, are key indicators of acidic alteration suggesting zebra rock at some point likely underwent extensive surface weathering or hydrothermal alteration. This weathering event likely facilitated the development of the zebra rock pattern, as indicated by the interactions of a number of orthogenic hydrothermal minerals within the hematite pigment. For example, kaolinite crystals being truncated by the dark hematite banding, as seen in figure 5a, or the pattern itself being truncated by a dicate vein in figure 5b. We should also take into consideration the findings of previous studies. In 1990, Lugnan and Roberts proposed that zebra rock may have been exposed to weathering from acid sulfates, citing the inverse concentration observed between sericite and alunite. Last year, Ralatak wrote a paper proposing that zebra rock may have originally been deposited as a type of waterlogged anoxic paleosoil, termed the glay soil, while in 2018, Abrojevic, while testing the thermal stability of the hematite pigments, determined zebra rock had not been exposed to temperatures higher than 300 Celsius since the time of original pattern formation. So with all this in mind, we can begin to construct an idea as to what the conditions were like during the formation of zebra rock patterns. Uh, the process in question must involve extensive weathering or alteration of the original rock or soil, of which acid sulfates may play a significant part. The process must also involve the mobilization and precipitation of large quantities of iron and occur at temperatures lower than 300 Celsius. Uh, it may also additionally occur in waterlogged glade soils. There are thus two formational environments that fit these criteria to a reasonable degree. The first is the acidic chemical weathering caused by the oxidation of pyrite and acid sulfate soils, and the second, which does ignore criteria 5, is the advanced argillic hydrothermal alteration of an iron bearing protolith. A brief overview of each of these two processes will now be provided. The development of acid sulfate soils is a common and contemporary problem that often arises in stagnant waterlogged soils. The flooded soils are usually anoxic and reduced things, thus leading to the formation of pyrite. As the water table lowers, pyrite is exposed to oxygen and undergoes oxidation, thus increasing the acidity and ferrous iron content of the surrounding groundwater. The aqueous ferrous iron can then diffuse back into the oxic zone, resulting in the oxidation and precipitation of iron oxides. 
Now, depending on the feedback systems involved, this counter diffusion of iron and oxygen could very easily result in the precipitation of iron banding through self organizational systems such as laser gang banding or Turing instabilities. The second process of interest is argillic and advanced argillic alteration. This is a form of hydrothermal alteration whereby rising sulfide rich vapors from an underlying magma source cool and condense at the highly acidic solutions of sulfuric and hydrochloric acid. These fluid reacts with the surrounding host rock, leading to the formation of specific hydrothermal minerals such as alunite, dicite, and kaolinite, as well as iron bearing minerals such as pyrite and even hematite. The exact mineralogical assemblage formed is controlled by the pH and temperature of the infiltrating fluid, which is slowly cooled and neutralized while progressing laterally through permeable bedding. Each of the five outcrops of zebra rock, which are first significantly in their mineralogy, match quite well to the different alteration regimes expected, as seen in figure 7. This suggests that the different mineralogies of the various zebra rock outcrops may have been a result of the varying temperature and pH of the originating hydrothermal fluid. While these processes can explain the conditions which led to the deposition of hematite pigment in zebra rock, they cannot by themselves explain why the iron was deposited in regular and repeating patterns. To explain that, we must first understand the concept of self-organization. Self-organization describes a process where a system enters a spatially ordered and repetitive state not due to the influence of any external allergenic force, but rather due to the influence of autogenic parameters internal to the system. Self-organization is a very common process within the geosphere and can be seen everywhere from the banding of agates to the ripple patterns of sand dunes. There are many different examples of self-organization that have been recognized in geochemical systems, some of which are provided on this slide. Two in particular, though, stand out as the candidates responsible for the formation of zebra rock patterns, laser gang banding and Turing patterns. Let's look at them in some more detail. Laser gang banding is a well-known form of self-organization, whereby the counter diffusion of two aqueous species, A and B, results in a deposition of a precipitate P in a series of repeating bands. Laser gang banding is quite common in geological systems, where it often manifests in sedimentary rocks as a series of concentric iron-rich banding. As such, it stands as a viable candidate to explain the formation of banded zebra rock patterns. The structure and shape of laser gang banding is defined by a number of rules, collectively referred to as the scaling laws. The first of these, the space law, dictates that the spacing between each subsequent band away from the origin point increases according to a fixed ratio defined by the spacing coefficient. The second of these, called the width law, similarly dictates that the width of each band increases progressing away from the origin at a ratio determined by the width coefficient. When measured, both the space and width laws appears to hold for zebra rock patterns, as seen in two diagrams to the right. This suggests a possible origin through laser gang banding, although the calculated spacing coefficient is much below the range typically expected. This potentially suggests very high reactant concentrations or diffusion coefficient ratios. The second method of self-organization relevant to the possible formation of zebra rock patterns are Turing patterns. Turing patterns are thought to be responsible for many different patterns observed in biological systems, including the striped soil of actual African zebras, among other animals. Abiotic Turing patterns are also not uncommon, although there are yet to be any proven examples of a Turing pattern in a geochemical system. Now, unlike laser gang banding, which can only produce banded structures, Turing patterns are of interest for their ability to reproduce the more exotic pattern morphology seen in zebra rock, as seen in the reproduction of the eye type patterns shown here. Here we see a parameter space that shows the many types of Turing patterns produced by adjusting two parameters of a Gray Scott model reaction system. Almost every pattern morphology seen in zebra rock is expressed in this parameter space from curved eye-type stripes to concentric rings to both ordered and disordered dot lattice structures. In summary, while laser gang banding is commonly responsible for iron banding and sedimentary rocks, and while zebra rock appears to conform to scaling laws, laser gang banding should not be able to produce the spot and rod pattern structures also seen in zebra rock. In contrast, Turing patterns, while presently unknown in geochemical systems, are unique in their ability to reproduce every different pattern morphology observed in zebra rock so far. In conclusion, the patterns observed in zebra rock most probably arose during a period of intense chemical weathering or alteration, which is likely facilitated either by the acidic hydrothermal alteration of iron bearing sediments or the acid sulfate weathering of waterlogged soils. During this process, geochemical self organization arose either by laser gang banding or the development of Turing patterns. Further analysis is planned to determine which two of the above four processes are the most likely mechanisms to finally explain how exactly the zebra rock got its stripes.
And that is all for today. Uh, thank you all for listening.